Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I've um, had people uh, question uh, this idea that pastors aren't or are teaching sex after Jesus returns on the earth. And that's absolutely what this millennial reign doctrine is all about. Okay, now these gentlemen are teaching a doctrine that says after Jesus returns, these people will still be able to have sex with as many women as they want. And that's what this doctrine is all about. Okay, they're going to be in their glorified bodies just like when they were 16, 20 years old and having sex with unsaved women and apparently saved women. I would like to get some clarification on that. But they absolutely do. That's what the doctrine's all about. It's not about anything else. It's about having sex after Jesus returns. There's no other reason to teach this idea. Now, uh, for those that say, you know, well, I've never heard of that before. Well, you're not listening. You're not paying attention. And I'll play a clip from this gentleman, Skippy Martin, from the 7th, which, is that today? That's today, this morning. All right, and listen to what he, now listen to what he has to say. Oh, let's see. That we don't have clearly illustrated in Scripture anywhere. Uh, but it does say that there will be many nations. Now we're going to get into that in a second as well. That there will be many nations during the thousand years. So it is not only the Jew who inhabits and populates the earth for the thousand years. It is also Gentiles because there will be... Okay, so... You, you have to understand the context of what he is speaking of. And he is speaking of after the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven. His doctrine, which is shared by probably 99.9% .9 of all the teachers today. Jesus returns. He's on the earth. And people are still having sex. And that word populate, that's a nice and safe and comfortable, polite way to say sexual activity. They're going to be having sex. Dirty, stinky, filthy sex. It's the same thing. Whether you sugarcoat it or not, it's the same thing and popped and this is after so when he talks about the thousand years he's talking about after the return of Jesus after the return of Jesus they're gonna be having dirty stinky filthy sex on the earth for a thousand years there's gonna be people in their glorified body and there's gonna be people that are not in their glorified body. It, it's very nonsensical. But this is what 99.9% .9 of these guys teach. I, I could fast forward. Let me fast forward a little bit because uh, it's just a bunch of rambling nonsense here. And if you wanted to check out the whole thing for yourself could. Let's see. Let's just go here. The true the thousand years are still alive. They don't have a glorified body. They have natural bodies. In the millennium, they're still sinful. They never die. They're having children. Their children are sinful, even though they're... They're having children. Now, if you understand how this stuff works... In order to have children, you got to have dirty, stinky, filthy sex. All right. 
and having children is a is a sugarcoating exactly what's in his heart and that in, and what's in his heart is dirty stinky filthy sex and that's what he's putting his hope into is that Jesus will return and he will be changed into his glorified body and able to have dirty stinky filthy sex that's why they teach this there's no other reason to teach it they try to hide it they try to hide it from even them their own selves they deceive themselves oh they're Christian because he separated the sheep from the goats they're not perfect and while you might have a Christian nation at the start, generation after generation, you have people who have sinful hearts. So what happens is... So keep in mind, he's talking about this is after <clears throat> what he's saying. It's after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And he's got it all wrong, obviously. Night to the Bangal Krisa. Night to dirty cops, dirty judges. And dirty, don't stinky, have favoritism filthy sex. And people on the take. God is the judge. God is enforcing everything. So when there is wrong done, when there is sin done, God judges it and deals with it perfectly and immediately. And what's right is always done, even when it's forced, because God is in control. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. We are reigning on earth with Christ in the kingdom. God the Father. Alright, so this, I just want to point out, this implies that uh, Jesus isn't reigning right now. Okay. And it implies that he's not reigning with Christ right now. Alright. And how can you rightly say that you are saved if you're not reigning with Christ right now? Remember what I showed you if you were paying attention yesterday? That when we are born of the Spirit of God, God makes His abode in us. He abides in us and we abide in Him. So if He reigns, we reign with Him. So, when we are saved, we reign with Christ. Now, if you're lacking the Spirit, you're not going to be able to see this. And clearly, these guys lack the Spirit and they're not able to see it. And they're not able to see it because they do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. That's why. Father must be present. Must be present in the kingdom. But God the Father is present. No. This is millennial kingdom. New Jerusalem is after the millennium. <clears throat> Everybody. It's, it's, it's living people. It's martyrs. It's Christians. It's Christ. Because they made it through the seven years. Uh, again, I just I want to point out there there is no seven year anything in the Bible, anywhere at all. All right, it's completely made up. Completely made up. It's not in the Bible. I can't show you it's not in the Bible because it's not in the Bible. If it was in the Bible, I'd be able to show you, hey, look, here it is. But when it's not there, I can't show you, hey, it's not there because it's not there. I don't understand the question. I don't get the question. Okay, so millennial kingdom you're seeing is everything. But the harder is God. Right. So right. No. Who have to die. Yeah. Who's gonna who's gonna populate and have children during the thousand years? It's, and this is really what it's all about, isn't it? Reverend or Pastor Skippy. Pastor Skippy. It's all about who's gonna be having sex. Dirty, stinky, filthy sex after Jesus returns. And it, well, the answer is it's going to be him. He's going to be having sex with your wives and your daughters and all the women of the earth. That's his doctrine. That's his hope. That's what he's teaching. Okay, so 
Okay. People who never died for the whole seven years. <clears throat> that seven Those years, are the people, remember? The seven years that's not in the Bible. Remember what he said. Not, it's not what God said. He's saying, remember what I said. The sheep and the goats that he separated, those were living people who never died. The, the, the sheep? The sheep go to Atlanta, Chicago, Moscow, about? Paris. What's he talking about? They're not a part of the kingdom. <clears throat> We're part of the kingdom. They live on earth. They populate the earth. They probably... They probably, yeah, I don't know. They, they, got, they have parties and baseball and sex, man. It's all about parties, baseball, and sex. All right, so let's, there was one point here where he said something about Isaiah 2, and who cares. Um, I just, I want to just uh, read a couple of verses from Isaiah 2. Why not? All right, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem and it came and it shall come to pass in the last days now this is key right here in the last days this is not after the last days this was in the last days and we're in the last days right now the last day is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ right let me establish that first I think that you know it because this guy's got it wrong uh, maybe you got it wrong too. <laughs> but just to hammer, I mean, if you believe what God says, then you, you're, you ought to be able to see how wrong this guy is. And how wrong 99.9% .9 of all the preachers and teachers today are. John 6, verse 39. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day day no man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day whoso eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day all right so this is not after the last day this is the last day so in Isaiah 2 when it says it shall come to pass in the last days this is not after the last day it's pretty simple that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it all right let's go back here and this is the will of him that sent me. Or let me go. This is the Father's will. Excuse me. Pardon me. This is the Father's will which has sent me. That of all which he has given me, I should know. And I'm sorry. Okay. It is, that's not what I. That's not the point I want to make. Hold on a second. The point I want to make is that God is not willing that any should perish. All right. So we are all believer and unbeliever. I mean, uh, since the, since uh, our fleshly birth, right? Since we're children, it is the will of God that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God is not willing that any should perish, right? And I mean, this is stated here in John chapter six, also. But there's a you know here it is in Second Peter chapter three not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance it is the will of God that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and are born of the Spirit of God but men prefer darkness rather than the light alright and oh I'm trying to think of a verse here um, 
I might have to skip this one. I'm going too far off here. Um, uh, okay, so Jesus talks about and become as children. Become as children. Let's see. In verily, there it is. Matthew 18. Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I think this is it. Let's keep. Let's continue to read. And whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same as greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receives me, Is this it? I think it. I think it is. No. I actually. Oh, I'm not so sure now. Okay. Oh no, this ain't it. The question is, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever thou therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same as the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. All right. So now this is great stuff. But this is not exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's not exactly. I'm, I'm just going to skip it. Oh, what am I doing here? I'm just gonna skip it. Just let me do one one little search here. Yeah, let's let's check out this one. So put the hands on the stem forbid them not come for such as the kingdom of heaven. Oh you know what I'm just gonna skip it. I I apologize. I apologize. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking there's something somewhere that talks about all right, I'll have to I right, just I'm just gonna have to apologize for that. Let's move on. All right, let me collect my thought here for a second. Kingdom. They live on earth, they populate. What was I talking about? Oh, Isaiah 2. Okay, on Isaiah 2, when it says it shall come to pass in the last days, my point was that uh, it is the will of God that we all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. People uh, don't want to because their deeds are evil. All right, so. And it says here, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. All nations. So now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Back in the old days, there was this one country of God and outside of that country were the Gentiles. Right, One Jewish nation that was the nation of God and outside of that nation were the nations essentially of Satan. And Jesus comes along and he tears down that wall and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are that nation. Right? We are that holy nation of God. Alright, so here in Isaiah 2 when it says uh, the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and nations shall flow unto it uh, this is parallel with what we read in John 14 for example in John 14 Jesus says uh, in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also so where is this um, Lord's house 
in my father's house are many mansions so where's the Lord's house you can't figure it out Jesus told us it's in heaven it's in heaven above and he goes and he ascends to heaven to prepare a place for us right and if he goes and prepares a place for us he will come again and receive us that where he is there we may be also all right and so if there was any uh, maybe just a slight doubt you know it just plainly flat out says in Galatians Jerusalem in Galatians 4 verse 26 but Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all Jerusalem is above Jerusalem is above in my father's house are many mansions above it's in the heavens if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also in Isaiah 2 the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains that's in the heavens and shall be exalted above the hills above the hills in the heavens and shall, all nations shall flow to it. it is the will of God that all come to repentance it is not the will of God that any man should perish but that all should come to repentance believe in the Lord Jesus Christ all right so anyways um, hey <laughs> you got to be careful these guys and make it they don't understand what they're reading because they don't believe what they're reading and they push these strange delusional doctrines and why in the world would you trust them over what the written Word of God is and that it bothers me because I was I did that too I've done that too and it scares me to think that I'm doing it now regarding anything at all the established written Word of God is above all and so we we should put it above even our own selves this stuff right here it does not come from men it comes directly from God above all right so if you got a King James Bible you got the perfect pure words of God in the English language all right and so let's see uh, this idea let's go finish it off with uh, this idea of, I mean what's he seven years it's not in the Bible I can't show you it's seven years because it's not in the Bible but I can show you that when Jesus returns we are gathered together we are lifted up in the air the sun immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven the powers of the heavens shall be shaken it's the end of of the world right now all the tribes of the earth will mourn if they were not going to be killed the unsaved there would be no reason for them to mourn if they were going to remain alive there would be no reason at all for them to mourn in Luke 21 it says men's hearts failing them for fear why would they be having heart attacks if they were not going to face the judgment of God right then and there I mean, there was not another moment that they could wait because it was upon them. It's upon them right now when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Otherwise, why are they mourning? Why are men's hearts failing them for fear if it is not the end of the world? Right? And even Jesus himself was asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he tells us. It is when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. So, in John 6, when we're reading about, I will raise him up at the last day. This is it. This is it was when he sends his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his luck. That's the end of the world. That's the last day. The last day when he raises us up. It's the last day. Right here in 1 Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel. <clears throat> and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The 
then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. To meet the Lord in the air. Not on the earth, in the air. We're going to be lifted up in the air. This goes back to Genesis. I mean, this is from Genesis to Revelation, but it goes back to, it starts at Genesis 3, verse 15, 16, uh, 15, excuse me, 15, where the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, that shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He's going to stomp his heel, therefore he's going to be up above, and we're going to be with him. Remember what Jesus says in John 14, that where I am, there you may be also. And so when he returns, when he returns, we will be lifted up to meet him in the air. Right? And I, and I will come again and receive you unto myself. We will be lifted up. It's like what we read in John chapter 6. I will raise him up, raise him up at the last day. Right? I will raise him up at the last day. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world, it is the last day, and we are lifted up into the air. Alright, so what happens on that last day? On that last day, and it's going to come. And it's going to come sooner than almost all people expect I mean probably all people I mean it could come today it could happen today are you expecting him to come today if you're not expecting him to come today then he's definitely gonna come at a time when you don't expect it second Peter chapter 3 but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with the with the great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven he'll come as a thief in the night at an hour which you're not expecting and when he comes the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So this this eliminates the idea of a thousand year period after Jesus returns. This eliminates the idea that there will be sexual activity after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the works that are therein shall be burned up. There is no more sex. I mean, even in First John chapter two, it pla it plainly states, plainly, the world passes away in the lust thereof. So when this world passes away, I mean, in Second Peter chapter three, when when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it it's there is no room, there is no wiggle room for more time. There's no wiggle room here. Because when Jesus comes, comes as a thief in the night, the elements shall melt, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. No wiggle room for more time for the unsaved. So it's the end of the world. There's no more sex. Even Jesus says in the resurrection, they neither marry nor, mar nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of heaven. So, there is no sex. I mean, if you understand this, you understand what he's saying, you understand there is no more sex. The world passes away and the lust thereof. So in the resurrection, that means when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. There is no more sex. If you're putting your hope into sex, then heaven's not for you because there is no more sex it's much greater and I don't care about sex even in this world I'm telling you sex is overrated right now and this world is coming to an end and thank God for that alright so 
No more sex after Jesus returns. And then, of course, in 1 Corinthians 15, I mean, this should, this should hammer it home. This should hammer it home right here. If you had any doubt at all, you shouldn't have any doubt. But if you had any doubt at all, consider this. When we are resurrected, all right, behold, I show you a, misery, a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye at the last trump. That's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ, or the dead shall be raised incorruptible. First, the dead in Christ, and those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Right? We'll put on incorruption. We'll put on immortality. And when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up and death is swallowed up in victory. That means there is no more death. So that eliminates the idea of people having sex and people dying, and people being unsaved. When it's the end of the world, it's the end of this world. And it's astonishing to me that people can't comprehend that idea that when Jesus comes, it's the end of this world. It's not a it's not a transition from one dispensation to another dispensation. That's that's not that's not in the Bible. It's a bizarre doctrine that is prominent in the world today among all religions. But it's not in the Bible. Let's see, then that's the problem. No matter how much you will it, it's not in the written Word of God. Not in the word, written Word of God at all. Alright, so, and again, just a. Uh, in case I got, I'll finish with this here. This will be the last one. Um, yeah, the Bible even tells us this would happen. Now, knowing this first, and that, and it's not saying knowing the second or third. It's not saying knowing this last or just put this off to the side. It's saying knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own what? Lust. Their own dirty, filthy, stinky, sexual fantasies. Walking after their own dirty, filthy, stinky, sexual fantasies of a thousand years of guilt-free sex in their glorified bodies as if they were 16 years old again. And having sex with all the women they want to. Because they're going to be reigning and ruling over unsaved people. They'll have authority over your you and your daughters and your wife and your sister and all that they they're going to have a, he's going to have authority over you and your daughters and he's going to be able to have sex with anything and everything he wants that's what he teaches there's no other way to there's no wiggle room here when you're talking about sex after Jesus returns, and this guy is saying he's going to be in his glorified body and having sexual relations and reigning and ruling over unsaved people, that's what he's talking about. There's no wiggle room there. And he's completely wrong on all accounts. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. You can't get around this stuff, and that's exactly what we're seeing in the world today. And this is why this is why that verse is in the Bible to warn us of people like this, to warn us of the time that we're in. And it's not mentioned once, but it's mentioned twice. Specifically, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. This is the last time. We are in the last days, we are in the last time, who should walk after their own filthy, stinky, sexual fantasies. 
It's exactly what we're seeing. All right. And so this gentleman right here, he just plainly says, populate, populate, populate. That's what, because he says populate instead of dirty, filthy, stinky sex? You, you, you're fooled? It, you're, you're, that, it, that's how easy it is to fool you? As long as he don't come out and say dirty, filthy, stinky sex. Well, I don't really know, you know what are you talking about. He's talking about populating, getting married, and having children. We have going to have some children and populate the earth. So you don't you don't think he's talking about dirty, filthy, stinky sex? That's how easy it is to fool you, isn't it? That's what I think. If you're not seeing it, there's a reason for it.